Well, hi there. This has got to be one of the most beautiful snakes on the planet. Now, I always like a black snake, but a black snake with stunning iridescence, that's just on a whole other level. And this snake, the white-lipped python, might be the most spectacular of them all. Especially if you take out the sunbeam snake, since, you know, you're never really gonna see that anyway. I will never forget the first time I saw a Bolens python at Pro Exotics when I was a kid. That glorious black snake covered in rainbows was more spectacular than any snake I had ever seen. I also remember that it cost $10,000. And uh, I don't think things are any better now. But then a few years ago, I saw my first one of these. And despite the fact that at closer inspection, this looks very different from a Bolens python, at first glance, I thought it was a Bolens python. And an argument can be made that this spectacular snake is even more beautiful than the Bolens python, if that's possible. Though that does seem pretty subjective. Really only a person who handles bees would be able to answer that definitively. Both come in black, especially the southern species, and both are shockingly iridescent pythons with white lips. They differ most conspicuously in head shape, pattern, and size. The Bolens python has a much boxier head, it has stripes all down its body, and it's somewhat larger than a white-lip python. The white-lip python has a sleeker, more elegant head, no stripes, and is smaller, though by no means small. And it has a very different price tag. But I don't have one, and I've never really considered getting one. So, uh, why is that? Is the white-lip python not a good pet snake? Oh, and is it the best pet snake for you? To help you figure this out, we're gonna give the white-lipped python a score based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, I'm gonna cut to the chase. This is why I don't have one. Handling a snake is, in my opinion, the best part of having a snake. Most snakes are ambush predators. They're also noodles with heads, so they're generally vulnerable to being eaten themselves. As a result of being ambush predators and potentially prey, they generally aren't that much fun to watch. But handling a snake is one of the most magical experiences that can be had anywhere on Earth. People come here to Clint's Reptile Room all the time that are terribly afraid of snakes. Until they get one into their hands, they will remain afraid. But when a person spends a moment holding a snake, the fear melts away and is replaced with love and respect. I see that happen multiple times each week. A member of my family who doesn't really even like reptiles all that much came here during an extremely stressful time in his life. He held Athena, one of my super dwarf reticulated pythons from Reach Out Reptiles, and he did that for over two hours. And afterward, he told me that he couldn't believe how relaxing it was. It's really one of the most peaceful activities imaginable. And that is mostly because Athena is a peaceful, relaxed snake. But some snakes are not. And white-lipped pythons, by reputation, are not. But not all reputations are deserved. Bubba Chunk came to us with a reputation for being mean, even by snapping turtle standards. So, does the white-lipped python deserve this reputation? The answer generally is, uh, yeah. Yeah, they do. This is not a peaceful, relaxed snake. It's also not an aggressive snake. It's just a nervous snake that bites hard and repeatedly when startled, uh, kind of like a black mamba. Captive bred individuals are better than wild caught by far, but if you get a white-lipped python, at some point, you're gonna get bitten. Or musked, or uh, both at the same time. For some people, that will not be a problem. But I am not one of those people. I avoid bites when I can. Now, in my life, I've only been bitten by two snakes when I was actually looking at the snake. If you pay attention to a snake and move in the right ways, you generally can avoid bites. We have a whole video on that, and a whole other video with Kevin McCurley. If you like the idea of handling snakes without being bitten, those are two great videos to watch. Like I said, I've only been bitten two times by snakes that I was paying attention to. Most of the times that I have been bitten were in moments like uh, this one, when I was distracted by things other than the snake. And none of those snakes were as notoriously bitey as this species. So if I get bitten today by this snake, um, I will not be surprised at all. When it comes to handleability, we give the white-lipped python a score of 2 out of 5. 
It's definitely not going to kill you. It shouldn't even do any major damage, but you are going to bleed uh, or really, really smell bad, depending on what happened exactly. Musking is definitely in their arsenal. It is just that the probability of these occurrences is so high that leads to the low score. If that's not for you, then probably neither are white lip pythons. Though the frequency will be considerably lower if you get a captive bred python and not an import, and if you put some really good time into socializing it. White lip pythons also get pretty long. Northern white lips get up to about seven feet, which is over two meters, and southern white lips can get to nearly 10 feet. That's uh, real close to three meters. In my opinion, that is one of the most delightful lengths for a snake, at least to handle, but not if that snake is a bit nervous and bitey, especially if it can launch itself like a whole body length. These snakes, though, they can become not entirely terrible to handle, but if you are looking for a snake this size to handle regularly, Look at boas and super dwarf retex. You can even get either of those in black with stunning iridescence. When it comes to care, we give the white lip python a score of 3 out of 5. And there's a big difference between adults and juveniles. As adults, white lip pythons are large, semi arboreal snakes. This means that they spend some time on the ground and thus require considerable ground space. But they also climb, so they need considerable vertical space as well. Toad Ranch and Zen Habitats both have enclosures that would work great, and we'll put links to those in the description. Once you pick the right enclosure, you'll need to pick the right substrate. High humidity is important for adults as shedding issues are fairly common, and it can be life or death for juveniles. Because they need higher humidity, cypress, mulch, or coconut husk would be great options. To help with humidity, also provide a large water bowl and mist the enclosure regularly. Ideally, a mist or a fogger controlled by a hygrometer would be used to maintain high humidity levels day and night. Again, this is most important for adults around shedding, and it's critically important for juveniles. They're a lot like chameleons. Cleanliness is also super critical. Warm, humid places are a haven for bacterial growth. Temperature gradients are also important for white lip pythons. They require a basking spot with temperatures around 88 to 92 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 31 to 33 Celsius, or 304 to 306 Kelvins. But if the whole enclosure is that hot, uh, they will die. So make sure they have access to temperatures around 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 Celsius, or 297 Kelvins. To get these temperatures, you can use something like a heat panel above and heat tape below, since you need to heat both the ground and in the branches. Just be sure to use thermostats to avoid burns and death from overheating. Provide lots of places to climb as well as to hide in both warm and cool places. This can be achieved using cork bark, branches, and artificial foliage. When it comes to feeding, white lip pythons are generally great eaters. They eat like boas and should be fed uh, like boas. Like boas, they should be fed every five to seven days as babies, but way less often, perhaps uh, something like every other week for adults, maybe even less for boas. And they're gonna come after prey with a vengeance, so keep that in mind every time you feed them, and uh, really any other time you enter the enclosure for any reason at all. They're also nervous snakes, as we've mentioned before. Again, just don't be too shocked when you get bitten. They do tend to mellow out with age and consistent positive interaction, but their strike range and teeth get larger as they grow, so just be prepared. And they tend to be pretty bitey in the enclosure, even if they aren't so bad once they're out, like this one here. You may also find the occasional hairball once they start eating prey with fur. And uh, that's normal, so don't freak out. It's just unusual for a snake. I'd just like to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon who make it possible for us to just keep making content like this. If you'd like to support this channel or just find out some of the really awesome perks we have for our patrons, please go check it out. When it comes to hardiness, we give the white lip python a score of 3 out of 5. As an adult, this snake can be quite hardy, assuming, of course, that yours is captive bred. It's considerably lower if it's not. But babies have a reputation for being very fragile that is likely somewhat deserved. The main thing to keep in mind is maintaining proper temperature and humidity levels. Be sure to provide temperature gradients and a high humidity level for them to thrive. It's also crucial to ensure that any baby you acquire is already feeding on its own, as this can be a somewhat challenging at times. This is really good practice for any animal that you might get. If you can meet these requirements and provide appropriate care, you can expect your white lip python to do well for many, many years, potentially living over 20 years, especially if you can get it through those first few critical months. When it comes to availability, we give the white lip python a score of three out of five. While you won't find these glorious snakes at your average pet shop, I have seen them in pet shops before. They'll also be at some reptile expos. But your best bet, especially for captive bred individuals, 
will be to find one from a breeder either online or locally, ideally. These white lip pythons come to us today from s'more reptiles. So if you are looking for an amazing captive bred northern white lip python and possibly southern white lip pythons in the future, they might be a really good place to contact and we'll have a link to them down in our description. It's always important to seek out captive bred individuals, especially with white lip pythons, as they will generally be healthier and better suited to life in captivity compared to wild caught specimens. When searching for a white lip python, you may need to be patient, do a little research, but with some persistence, you can find a reliable source for these incredible snakes. Just be prepared to wait for the right opportunity to get your hands on one. Most of them that you see are imports. And uh, you know, while you're waiting for the right captive bred individual to turn up, it's a good time to do your homework on their husbandry and get everything dialed in in the enclosure. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the white lip python a score of three out of five. The snake itself is moderately priced, not as expensive as some species, especially those that are this beautiful, but uh, not the cheapest either. The rest of the supplies for this snake are not that expensive. You'll need a relatively large, tall enclosure for the snake, but there are some relatively affordable options available. A UVB light is most likely highly beneficial and will bring out the iridescence more in the enclosure. Other necessities include a heat source, thermostat, substrate, water bowl, hides, and climbing branches. You know, these are all fairly typical items for snakes, especially semi-arboreal snakes like this, and they're not gonna break the bank. For a snake this large and spectacular, they're really not that expensive to get and set up properly. But there are definitely cheaper options if you just want an awesome snake. And if you decide to save a bit of money on getting an import, expect to spend it on the vet and know that it has a much higher chance of dying prematurely and biting you regularly and threatening the stability of the wild population. Maybe just, maybe just don't get one that is not captive bred. And this is why overall we give the white lip python a score of 2.8 out of 5. White lip pythons are glorious to look at but they do have a great number of downsides. Babies can be difficult to keep alive and healthy, and uh, they bite. This is not probably what I would recommend as a good first snake. This is a good snake for people that are meticulous about care and value aesthetic over interaction. That said, a solid understanding of snake behavior is a must. But if that is you and you have to have a black, iridescent, non-morph snake with white lips, and a bull lens python is just out of your price range, then the white lip python might be the perfect pet snake for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Though that really does seem pretty subjective. Only a person who handles bees would be able to answer that question definitively. Uh. Bees? Uh-huh. What are we talking about? Beauty. I have the bee holder. Yes. Got it, got it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Ouch. Uh-huh. It's a good one. Is it? It's a good one. Is it? Uh-huh. I don't know. Yes, it is. You know it is. Oh, goodness. Okay. You know, because cause like, like emerald tree skinks, love them. They're beautiful. That has nothing to do with it. You know, for me, I'm trying to think how many things there are that I like them because they're beautiful. And... You hang out with Will all the time. Mm -hmm. That's true, but uh, it was personality first. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm glad to know that. Yeah. <laughs> Not just a piece of me. As my beauty fades over the years, you'll still be... Oh, no, 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 no. You, when you grew that beard, yeah. it, 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 gave, it gave a depth to your facial features. Okay. Before that, you were just one of those <laughs> blonde <laughs> guys. <laughs> Well, oh, and but now you're now you are just total beautiful. Yeah, beautiful is the best word for it. <laughs> but you could use a whole lot of similar terms to describe oh, like what? Uh, <laughs> gorgeous, okay. uh, Go resplendent, resplendent, uh, uh, breathtaking. Um, yeah, uh, just mesmerizing. These are all words I would use. But but it was it was personality first. You know, like like I like aesthetic but functionality comes first for me in virtually all aspects of my life. Uh, and that's, that's the case with Jason, for example. Uh, Jason is so functional. He is, yeah, he's, he's highly functional. He's, he's a he, closet engineer. Yeah, he, oh, absolutely. You know, he, 
he he happens to be a pretty good looking dude, you know. Very but, good looking. But well, you know, he's no Will. <laughs> <laughs> Few are, but uh, I agree to that. Yeah. 